the top of the Poconos, it's the Balcony Show with your host Ann Thatcher, Bo Summer, and me, the Mad Cat. We have searched the globe for the best in indie music, so you don't have to. So here we go, the Balcony Show. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Balcony Show. I'm here with the Mad Cat and Bo. Hello. Hello. My dudes, my dudette. Mm-hmm. We are here. We, we are, are here. here. We are here. We are present. Gordon we Hughes present? Who? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, kind of Mad Cat gave me the the hashtag this week. Oh, yeah? Uh, Which one was that? When I practically went through the floor and my chair broke? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. No. Um, hashtag whale morsel. So what? Hashtag whale morsel. Whale morsel. Yeah, um, that guy that got swallowed by the whale and got oh, spit yeah, yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. And he was talking about he, when he when he got swallowed by the whale, it was pitch black. Yep. He and then a, he He was in there for like thirty seconds. Yeah, 30, 30 and he started seconds. like fighting. Yeah. I'm crazy, isn't it? But I was thinking, what was the whale thinking? Like and then well, I was thinking he was thinking more like <laughs> you know because <laughs> it's just not their, yeah it's, it's just not their normal thing a lot of people were trying to call BS on it you know saying that oh no it's not possible because they were expecting them to have all kinds of jacked up injuries but um, not an, really because a, it's a, your- another photographer had come to his defense on it because he literally had a photograph of him getting swallowed by the whale so, he's like, no, it's, you know, it's like, I got swallowed by the whale. I didn't get all boogered up. You know, it just, they immediately just belt you back out. But what's so interesting is a couple shows back, I don't know if you remember this, but you were talking about, you know, the ocean and that yeah. your luck that you would get swallowed by a whale. That's and exactly. That's insane. You're not, you better not be lobster <laughs> no. hunting in the ocean. You better just stay out of the ocean. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no beach for you this but summer. What's the chances of it? And then I see this article on his thing, and I'm thinking... It totally proves my point. Once again, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the Mad Cat has been validated. <laughs> it's insane to... Like, I, I can't wrap my head around it. I, I don't know. I, he said that it took him a couple seconds to, yeah. like, really figure out that he was inside mm. the mouth mm. of the whale. Oh, I can't breathe. I yeah, can't yeah, yeah. Breathe. The cluster, the I'm, getting, of I'm getting, I'm getting anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't breathe. Neither could he. Oh my god. And I hate to say it. I mean, you know, I give that I give that guy credit for doing what he did. But you know, I myself, I'd have to grab my scuba knife and just start stabbing away. You know what because I mean? Because you happen to have one in your back pocket. No, uh, <laughs> you're scuba diving. You <laughs> tend to keep a scuba knife. With, I don't know. I've never been scuba diving. All right, I mean, well, I, I kind of failed my black water test, but, you know, I tried. Well, we have Calm O'Mahani yeah. on the show later today in the Hot Touches. Uh, you're going to love him. But first, let's get started with a first song from Southern Gothic, Villain. Take a listen, and we'll be right back with the rest of the show. Do it. Do it now. You know we're over, baby Why can't you let it go? We keep starting over And it's really starting to take its toll I want to see you smiling Even if it ain't with me Don't want to be the bad guy But maybe that's what I gotta be Again. Try to be your hero, try to be 
on the balcony show and right now we have the song damage by calm O'Mahony and the hot touches so sit down give it a listen and when you come back we'll have calm on the line for a great interview so give it a listen here we go <laughs> Mistakes that we made Oh, mistakes we've made Down in the It's too late, the devil is just on its way Oh, the devil is on its way
Hi everybody, welcome to the balcony and we are very excited because we have all the way from Ireland, Colm O'Mahony. Hi Colm. Hi everybody. Welcome to the show, dude. Thanks for having me. How are things in Ireland? Uh, things are good. Well, uh, I'm a full-time musician, so... Uh, I'm, can't be I'm better not than that. To... <laughs> yeah, I, well, I can't play any music at the moment, so... Um, well, hopefully real slow. soon. Yeah, hopefully soon, yeah. yeah. But hopefully in the meantime, soon. you have the self-titled CD, EP CD out, um, Colm Mahoney and The Hot Touches. That's right. Maybe. How the heck did you come up with the name The Hot Touches? That's a good question. Um, I think I think I heard someone say it on a TV show or something. That's a hot touch or something. <laughs> I must have written it down and said, oh, yeah, that's a good name for a band. <laughs> so that's, I think that's how it happened. I was waiting for this big, like, really Really big X. For something dirty. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. See? Maybe subconsciously. Okay. Well, what kind of TG? Yeah. What kind of show were you watching? There you go. So, yeah. <laughs> our listeners just heard the, your first song, Damage. Can you tell us something about Damage? Yeah. Damage happened. I was working in the Middle East, I remember. Oh, wow. And I had just come back to Ireland, so I was I was only there for a few months, but it was around uh, November, say. And the, there's a, a field behind my mother's house that floods, <laughs> and it was raining. It was miserable. It was you know, just complete opposite to what I'd been witnessing. And I was like, oh yeah. So I just started writing <laughs> what was outside, and I think the mood of the song was kind of. Um, you know, I was just influenced by that, and that's what happened. I followed kind of where I went. I would have never the... connected. Would have you? No, I, w- I wouldn't. I wouldn't have connected the, that as an inspiration at all. That that's fantastic, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I remember I, I, I wrote it on acoustic, and it was a very different song then than right. you know what it turned out to be. But uh, yeah, it's you know it's um, yeah it's I, I like that song. You know, I think it's. Uh, it turned out well, you know. Yeah, no doubt, no fans. doubt. I, I got to, I got to make comment on the, the guitar lead in that. Your guitar player, yeah, sh- he's shredding, shredding. Yeah, yeah, love it. Yeah, that, that's Adrian Healy. Yeah, yeah, he did a, he did a good job on that. With, uh, yeah. Maybe I should tell him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pass it on. So yeah, how did, how did your group come together? How did, we're how all, did that happen, Colin? We're all musicians in in Clarny. Um, so, uh, my full-time job is to, to play in and, and, you know, I, I, I do covers on my own. So I do some of the other guys and, you know, I, I had these songs and I was like, well, you know, I think you're going to record and whatever. And then the idea for maybe getting a band together and, you know, so thankfully everybody was kind of up for it. And yeah, so it's everybody from the local music scene. Plus my brother, he you know he's uh, he's one of those. <laughs> Plus musicians, my so. brother, <laughs> yeah, my, my big brother. So yeah, you know, just because um, Killarney is a it's a tourist town, okay, um, right, and it's really busy every summer. Um, so there's a lot of musicians around, and and, and well, uh, hopefully it's a, it's, you're going to get out there. But I got to tell you, this your music is uh, first of all, your voices stand out. I, I love the clarity in your storytelling. You know what I mean? So kudos to you for that. And um, which brings me to your next song, which is happens to be my favorite, which is Preacher's Daughter. You <laughs> really, really, and the video to this, everybody check it out because I really like what you did with that too. It, it's oh, really thanks. cool. Um, tell me about Preacher's Daughter. Did you date a Preacher's Daughter by any chance, Colin? <laughs> I, I, I think there's a, a a few a few girls make up the preacher's daughter. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. You, you know, actually, I I was out in India. I I went to India for a month. Uh, oh. <laughs> I was doing yoga or whatever, you know. So I bought this little guitar with me, and I was kind of revisiting Tom Petty's songs and Tom Petty in general, and I was learning um, 
uh, even the losers. And okay. I kind of had it off, and, and then I just suddenly hit on the intro to the song. And um, I was look, you know, so down by the water, I was looking for something to rhyme <laughs> with water. <laughs> so a daughter came, and I was like, oh, daughter, yeah. And then, you know, preacher's daughter just kind of came to me, and I said, yeah, that sounds, you know, kind of good. So uh, I just went with it, and uh, yeah. So I, there's no, you, know, you just made this 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 story up. It had. Uh, there's elements of truth in it, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Know, I live in a small town, so I can't say, I can't say too much. <laughs> I, li- I like I like how most of your inspiration seems to be derived while being outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. yeah, you know, I, I, um, I, I don't kind of write deliberately. You know, I, I just pick up a guitar and, you know, if something kind of comes, it comes, and if not, right, um, it's... It's not the best way, maybe, to write songs, but it's the only way that I can. Nice. Why did you choose nice. music, Colin? Um, you know, I only started playing guitar when I was twenty-four and, and singing when I was twenty-three. So it was it was always there. You know, my, my older brothers played, and yeah. um, you know, I could just sing or whatever. It just it was just something that was there. But I went to a Bruce Springsteen concert in 2003, and I, I got a free ticket to go. You know, I, I knew a bit about Bruce Springsteen or whatever, but yeah, I was totally converted after that. I, I just it was so. Um, ever since then, you've been like, hold my beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It, like within a year, you know, I was performing, wow. which was something I never thought I'd. You know, I, I never ever thought I'd. You know, take that step. But my, you know, my brother had done it, and a lot of my friends were doing it. Uh, so I guess that, you know, made entry into the scene a little easier. Right. Nice, nice. Now I gotta, I gotta ask you. Now I, I know you've mentioned, you've now mentioned Tom Petty, you've mentioned Bruce Springsteen. Who were uh, like your your influences in music? Because I mean, when, like when um, like when I was listening to Preacher's Daughter, I kind of felt just just a hint of the Cure and maybe a little bit of the Pixies. You know, just a little bit of the, of that uh, the easy the easy the easier side of the Pixies. You know what I mean? Like, um, and not overwhelmingly so, but I mean, it was you know to me it was in there. So I mean, just tell me who were your influences? Well, that's interesting because I, I shared um, a room with my brother, uh, my middle brother, and he was really big into the Pixies and the Cure and, and things like that. But you know, Nailed he it. always called me. A, <laughs> yeah, he always called me a, a pop tart. When it came to you know music, because I just liked the good songs, <laughs> right, right, so right. So it was like uh, you know, and uh, so I kind of just absorbed whatever. Um, so there would have been you know kind of influences, but you know mainly it's it's Bruce Springsteen, it's Tom Petty, Paul Simon. I'd go you know yeah. Cat Stevens when I was really young, and and some Irish bands then like the Dubliners. I don't know if you ever heard of them, and Lou Kelly, and you know so. And uh, as well, you know, singing covers, I think, you know, you're, you're telling stories all the time. I think um, one of you mentioned the storytelling there, so. Right. I, Absolutely. I, I guess it's it's a hodgepodge of everything. You know, I, I couldn't really But it works. Yeah. It, it totally works. works. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to yeah. take a break, <laughs> and we're going to listen to Preacher's Daughter by Colin Mahoney. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> and the hot touches. We'll be right back. It's a summer I'll never forget And I haven't had a better one yet And now as the years roll by I still see that look in her eyes Spinning arms down by the water Just being preacher's daughter
on the Balcony Show, and we have Colm Mahoney on the show. And we just got done listening to Preacher's Daughter. I absolutely love that song. It's a really good song. Um, Thanks. So just tell our listeners where they can, you know, find your music and state, like, you know, we just follow you and know what you're yeah. doing. Well, I, you know, I'd, I'd probably go to the website first, which is thehottouches.com. And on the right-hand side, all of our socials are there. So we're streaming on Spotify. We're on Bandcamp. We're on um, SoundCloud. Uh, and a whole host of other uh, streaming sites uh, via DistroKids. So, um, yeah, there's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, the whole lot. But everything you'll find uh, at the hottouches.com. And uh, a new bio as well, hopefully soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> so get out there, everybody, and please give them a like. Um, follow them. I There's a lot of great things coming up as soon as this you're able to get out there and play you know what I mean I, I hope that's really soon um, why don't you tell me one thing about you that most people would not know Colin um, one thing about me most people would not know well most people don't know me I suppose so <laughs> but um, so I, I actually I used to work in politics uh, not so long ago wow uh, there which you is go. kind of the antithesis of That's what I'm doing now. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, then, then you must have a lot of material for songs. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah, I actually worked in, um, in uh, Brussels in the European Union. Wow. Uh, for a time. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's what took me out to Oman in the Middle East as well. So, um, wow. Yeah, quite, quite quite different uh, the white collar is, is gone you know, again and uh, I think I'm uh, a lot happier uh, being a musician I would imagine so yeah it's all yeah. about the happiness man yep it's all about the happiness yeah, I, think, you know, I, I think it is I mean uh, your, your health is your wealth you know, even mental health or whatever you know right it's absolutely what say, I think. yeah so the final song that our listeners are going to hear this evening is Young Love <laughs> you want to tell us something about that song? Yeah, um, that's actually my favorite song off of uh, off the whole album. But uh, it doesn't seem to be everyone else's for some reason. My mother likes Preacher's Daughter as well. <laughs> that song actually came from, I think, uh, I think it was my nephew who was talking about you know getting into a relationship or whatever. And I mean, he was maybe. 15, 16 at the time or something, you know. And I was like, you know, I have plenty of time, you know, don't be worrying about that. You know? And then he was like, but I really like her, you know, or whatever. And then I, I kind of, you know, I was thinking about it and I said, well, why don't you put yourself in his shoes and, you know, say, well, screw them telling us we're too young, you know, we'll, <laughs> you know. And the story just kind of unfolded and I, you know, picked up a guitar one night and I was after getting a, a Telecaster and a new amplifier. <laughs> nice. So everything just kind of came together, and uh, I, I put a bit of flanger on, on the Telecaster, and, and away it went. But I was really happy, you know, with uh, the verses, the choruses, and, and, and a nice bridge. You know, I just thought, well, this is all the elements that I like in a song. So, um, yeah, I was really happy with that one. Yeah. All right, well, listen, I want to thank you so much uh, for spending some time with, here with us on the show. Um, thank you. Thank you. means everything for having me. And continued success with your show. Uh, continued success, and I can't wait until... One of these days, we're going to meander over to Ireland. We know quite a few bands over there now, so it would be oh really cool God. to actually... Oh, my God. welcome. Yeah. <laughs> you'll, have, you'll have the green carpet rolled out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We may we may be kicked out after Mad Cat gets over there with his. <laughs> yeah. Right. My Irish buddies have been trying to drag me over for years, and I, I've just never taken the opportunity to go. But they're crazy. They're crazy. Man, you gotta come. And it, you gotta come. We love it here. I, love it. I, I I've always you know I've always felt that. I've always felt that. But yeah. Um, yeah. in all seriousness, thank you. Much continued success too for you. All right. Thanks very much, guys. All right. Good night, Colin. I've been enjoying the show. Thank you. We're going to listen to Young Love by Colin Omahani and The Hot Touches. And we'll be right back with the rest of the show. Young boy, 
so in love, so excited. They say you know it ain't ever gonna last. Shouldn't try to fight. She's 19 and she's head over heels. She can't hide. Her mama says you know it ain't the real thing. You gotta wait to find it. And she says, No love, don't even start. It's a fast track to a broken heart. Young love, pulling stream, just like another silly movie scene. Young love, young love, don't even start. Welcome back to Indie Radar this week, and I wanted to touch base on some things about social media and being social on social media, and that kind of makes sense in that sentence, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> right? Be yeah, social. Be social on social media. Be social. Be human. Talk, you know, tell us, personalize it a little bit. It makes me crazy uh, to go on somebody's social media platform, whether it's Insta or whatever, I'm checking out your music or checking out your videos. And, and all I see is just, you just shared something. That's it. You're just sharing your music. Um, some ideas of how to be social on social media. You can uh, reach out to other musicians, maybe collaborate on you know, some banter back and forth between your accounts. You're, you're engaging each other, and that's going to you know, trigger those algorithms a little bit. Uh, talk about upcoming gigs and why you are excited, why the gig is important. You know, obvious information. Um, that's another thing that drives me crazy as a fan. I will, you know, go to your Instagram and see that you made, you shared some kind of, you know, I don't know, you know, a, a gig announcement on your story. And then I go to the post, but there's no information. Like, where is it? Do, is there, you know, a cover charge? Are there tickets for sale? Where do I buy the tickets? So... Um, again, it's all about engagement. Talk about the industry. Provide and feed. You have to spoon feed people that are coming to visit your social media platforms. Um, so essentially, again, just be social on social media and be human and humanize yourself, not just 
using all these platforms, um, you know, of course they're wonderful because they're free advertising. But if you're just sharing stuff, people are going to just blow by it and not really pay attention. And that's the whole reason why we're even there is because we want to be social with you. So hopefully that helps. Engage. And, yeah. Yeah. Engage. And I think we need that more than ever now. So especially when, you know, I see a lot of states are opening up to full capacity in the next two to three weeks. So, um, you know, we're Look all out. looking for engagement. <laughs> yeah. We're going to nanti narc. <laughs> So anyway, but well, thanks for listening to uh, to me on Indie Radar, and I'll catch you guys next week. I'd like to remind you that the Balcony Show is proudly sponsored by Rock Hard Studios. Check them out for all your musical production needs in East Stroudsburg. RockHardStudios.com is the place you want to look. Mad Cats, Mad Tricks. And we are here on Mad Cats, Mad Tracks, and today we are taking another special turn. We have Brandon Bing, with, it, and we're going to be talking about his song, Dying Breed, which so many of us are a dying breed. That's it. That's what's up. So, welcome to the show, Brandon. How are you, man? Hey, I'm doing good. Appreciate y'all for having me. So, tell me, you know, give us a little insight to the, you know, your song, Dying Breed. Yeah, so, uh... I wrote the song. Actually, I wrote that song last year, um, and I was going into the studio uh, last June uh, when I cut that project. And uh, when I was thinking about the song, you know, adding it to the total catalog for that that project, I was trying to find something that was going to be a focal point for the title, and also something that was going to be able to give a little bit of an introduction into some of the deeper layers of where I'm trying to go as a songwriter and as an artist. And so Dying Breed basically was a, a record where I took a lot of the, the artists and writers, you know, people that inspired me uh, throughout my past and currently as well, and put that kind of into the, the track as well as trying to paint the picture of just the, the day-to-day, you know, way of life uh, from my walk, right? You know, a lot of people in country music, I think, um, as, a, as, a, as a whole, there's a lot of talent. Um, however, I feel that there's a lot of people, male and female, that don't necessarily represent, you know, the their brand or, or themselves right, to the public right. in the right uh, way. You know, they they try to be somebody that they're not, I guess. Yeah. You know, I feel like there's a lot of emulation. I get it. And they're, so they're, they're just there to pick up the paycheck. Yeah, get the paycheck, get the notoriety, be a you know, have a little jingle in the Wranglers or or get the starlight, right? Or be around a couple of uh, maybe fanboy or fangirl around a few artists here and there. You know, I, I just look at things a lot deeper because, you know, I look at it from a perspective of, like, lifestyle and reality of experience, right? So Dying Breed was, you know, a lot of the people, a lot of cats that we lost a lot of greats in country music. It was kind of coincidental that, you know, last year with everything that had transpired, we lost so many people in country music as well, male and female. And so Dying Breed was, like, kind of the perfect segue going into 2021, kind of paying homage to some of those names or those that paralleled it and showing to country music as a, uh, as a genre and to the, the community of listeners that there's a new class of, of writers and artists that are on the upswing uh, coming through this new decade. And so that's why when I wrote the hook on that, pro- on that particular record, I stated, um, you know, never hurts to hear the old time fiddle or the bend of the pedestal strings, feel the chicken picking of a banjo or the sound when that harmonica sings. Old school country legends paved the way for a new class. A few far and in between, make this old dying breed last. And I feel like I got some other artists and songwriter buddies in Nashville and some surrounding areas out in Texas that I feel are really starting to come to the forefront and try to stake their claim. And with uh, a lot of the slots that have kind of opened up for those that are no longer with us, unfortunately, it's, uh, it's, it's our responsibility you know, this year to kind of claim those slots and, you know, show that this, this next generation, this next uh, class, if you shall say, of uh, writers and artists is going to be the next group that's going to kind of pioneer and, and add to the, the passing of the torch of what made country music great, which was the storytelling, which was real instruments um, versus the whole pop culture, you know, synthesizer, 808 drum, right, you know, right. cliche stuff. So, that's kind of where it came from, man. And it's just, and then, like I said, just parts of it, certain elements kind of 
showcase some of the things in my lifestyle and some of the environments that I've been around are things that kind of inspired me in country music uh, and just my day to day. And that's what Dying Breed is. So, and it's a and it's a party song for sure. Definitely getting your ass. That is absolutely fantastic, brother. Now, before we let our listeners listen to that song, what do you got coming up? Tell us. Yeah, so I'm actually uh, I'm down here in Florida. Um, I just finished the Key West Songwriters Festival. It was the 25th anniversary for the BMI um, Key West Songwriters Festival. So that was a great time. Uh, I had a chance to play like nine shows over la- over a, a three day period and, and meet a lot wow. of great people. So that was uh, definitely what I call a, a songwriters marathon. You know, it was <laughs> yeah. a chance to really put my, put our reps in, and I think I think we really needed it. Get a little, um, you know, opportunity to get back out in front of uh, bigger crowds and, and new faces, and get them to kind of, you know, latch on to to what we're putting out there for their, you know, for them to listen to. Um, and then I just got back from Montana and uh, had a show out there as well. So that was, um, you know, that was really cool. Next month, um, actually, at the end of this month. Uh, in Wildwood, Florida, Oxford Downs, um, I'm going to be doing a, a show um, with uh, Tristan, and that's uh, Travis Tritt's son, Tristan Tritt. Nice. He's a uh, he's an up and coming artist, and he's more on the rock and roll vein. But it's going to be kind of exciting to be able to do something in the backyard, and I'm I'm good friends with uh, you know uh, their family and stuff like that. So to be able to uh, share the stage with him is going to be a good time, and some other buddies as well that are uh, some other artists. So we're looking forward to that on the 28th. And then uh, I'll be flying back up to Nash, and uh, I'll be there next month for um, some sessions, meetings, and then I'll be uh, recording my next project. So I'll be there, you know, pretty much all month, uh, cutting my next uh, project. So I'm excited. I'm going to be cutting seven seven songs. I might cut eight, but I think I know I know for sure I'm cutting seven. So uh, definitely got a lot of new music coming, and uh, going to raise the bar, change the energy up, and give uh, another layer of the onion to to let people know who Brandon Bing is. Well, that's what's up, brother. And we we're eager to hear it. So when you get that next album all put together, you make sure you come back and reach out to us, and we'll uh, do our best to get you on the show here and have a lengthy interview and check out your new music. Sounds good, man. Appreciate it. All right, folks. Right now we have Brandon Bing, Time Breed. So sit down, give it a listen, and here we go. <laughs> Appalachian snow cap on the bottom of the Blue Ridge Gap. See me in the river up Tennessee, or the creeks of the Chattahoochee. Dirty heathen, hut fin. You don't know about the places I've been. I can tell you a few things about my past. Walking me in these woods, you won't last. I'm wild riding like bareback Jack. Don't touch this old cowboy's hat. Hank Senior, hey, good looking. I want to know, sweet girl, what you cooking? And if you say that ain't country, I say turn on some David Allen Coe. But oh boy, it really don't matter. You never call me by my name, no Never heard to hear the old time fiddle Or the bend of the pedestal strings Feel the chicken pick and double banjo Or the sound when that harmonica sang Old school, country legends Paved the way for a new class Few far and in between Make this old time breathe last Floor Bama Right next to Perry Fiddle Kitty Mullet toss and chili cook-offs Fishing rodeos and big beach shows 1878 Green Hall All this honky-tonk I know I can tell you about old Billy Bob's Outlaws and armadillos Boy, you ain't no renegade So what business got walking my way? Don't get caught in the wrong place I'll write a song for your early grades Three wooden crosses Hit a little RT Mixed with a whiskey lullaby And some old Brad Paisley It's a great day to be alive See, Mr. Travis T Don't be a crazy outlaw, son Oh, you're wide up like me Never heard to hear the old time fiddle Or the bend of the pedestal strings Feel the chicken picking up a banjo Or the sound with that harmonica sings Old school, country legends Paved the way for a new class Few far and in between Make this old time great last
Welcome back to The Balcony Show. Coming up next, we've got Austin Hopkins, Stop Thinking About You, so check it out. Try to close my eyes and not but to stare to see you laugh And it's always the same Waking up in this pain First and the last thing I see Is everything I wanted us to be Got the same song stuck on repeat Going back to our old scenes Wishing on every damn star I see I see, I see Just wanna turn back time Say sorry and make you mine Same words in my head gets messed up And I just wanna stop thinking about you Got me so lost and I'm feeling confused And first you say you need me Can't live without me And then you go and leave So damn hard to try and I move on I'm getting lost in conversation I just don't have the patience anymore I can make it through the day As long as I don't see your face Thinking about something that you said Ain't no quiet in my head, my head Just don't wanna turn back time Say sorry and make you mine Your words in my head, you messed up And I just wanna stop thinking about you Got me so lost and I'm feeling confused And first you say you need me Can't live without me And then you go and leave Cause it had me praying for a second chance Oh yeah Welcome back. That was Austin Hopkins. Stop thinking about you. And we have come to the end of another fantastic. Fantastic for who? I broke my chair at the top of the show. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, that was pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. Now that he's okay. It actually really was. I mean, I was okay. It was like in slow motion. It was very slow motion. It was weird. It was like this. uh, uh." Yeah. (laughs) And then Bo turns and looks and goes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Such great concern. And Mad Cat was just innocently eating some Hershey bar and yeah. we're just like BSing before the show starts. And, and all of a sudden yeah. you turn around and it's like, oh, he's down on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> I went to turn to get up and the, the, the chair just said, nope. that's it. I'm quitting. Nope. But you were on a, 
in your defense, it was on a weir- really weird angle when you turned the chair. I think it just kind of yeah, but twisted it kind of fun. Uh, you know, like the straw that broke the camel's back. That mm-hmm. weird angle made that chair say, Ugh, that's <laughs> yep. enough. Nope. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we got a but, hashtag for that. <laughs> anyways, thank you to Colm Omahani from uh, and the Hot Touches. Definitely for joining us from all the way from Ireland. Hope yeah. they get to get out there and play real soon. I know that's tough for musicians not to be able to get back on the stage. I know out here. Thank God, um, New York City just opened up wide, so oh, theaters yeah. coming back in a big way down there, and concerts and stuff like that. And I know a lot of my friends are very happy, you yeah. know, and the musicians. So good luck to Colum, and I hope that uh, he's out playing real soon. But follow them, like their page. Yeah, do it. It's, it's really, wanna, really, really good. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really wanna. good. So uh, I'd like to remind you that we have a Reverb Nation campaign going on. If you'd like to get on the show, then definitely go to our website, thebalconyshow.com, and click on the link. It'll take you right there to the Reverb Nation campaign and submit to get on the show because... Who wouldn't want to be a part of this all this madness, man? Just do it. Just, Just do, do what it. you're told. <laughs> do what so you're told. I think that's it. Not unless you guys got anything. No, uh, it's been a, an eventful evening. I got a new chair. Far. I mean, that's what I got. <laughs> I got a new chair. <laughs> so on that note, we're going to end things tonight with a song from the Hawkeyes, one of our favorites here at the Balcony Show. And the name of the song is Wanted Man. Take a listen. Good night, everybody from the Balcony Show. We'll catch you next week. Yes. If the devil's in the details, then the devil's always in this town. Not much more that you can say, explain the happenings, all the happenings all around. We got things we say and things we don't.
and that's what's up.